Amen. I'm amazed, amen, we was talking to some of the men this morning after the service, amen, at how this tent meeting going on and 400 people getting saved, amen, at a time, but nobody's getting changed, amen. And Now, listen, I, I believe if preaching won't get the job done, you can forget about all that other gimmicks and games, amen, folks, that's playing. Uh, I don't care what kind of uh, uh, puppets you put on the stage up here. Amen. If the preaching of the Word of God won't do it, amen, all that other stuff ain't going to work. I mean, you might get people to the altar. You might get a profession, amen, but it ain't going to change their walk of life, amen, and it ain't going to change their eternity either, amen. I'm glad to be saved, amen. I'm glad that God let me get somewhere around some Bible preaching, amen, where, where God can move and the Holy Ghost conviction was real. I'm glad that... I, I guarantee you, I'm just glad, amen, that I got in where I could, amen, where I found out there's a Holy Ghost conviction, it was yeah. real, salvation was real, amen. amen, and it changed my life, it didn't let me stay where I was at, amen, amen. it didn't let me continue on the way I was, amen, amen. I would met some folks that had got saved, amen, by profession, amen, that carried on the way they was, amen, and uh, they talked just like I talked, walked like I walked, drank like I drank, cursed like I cursed. But they were saved and going to heaven, and I was dying in my sin and going to hell. Uh, but you know what I found out? That crowd didn't get what I got the day I got in. Amen. When I got in, you know what I did? I said a curse word the same day. And you know what the Holy Ghost did? He convicted me. Amen. He'll change your talk. I'm telling you, God will change your talk when he saves you. Amen. I ain't no doubt. He won't let you stay the same old curse you was. Thank God for it. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to be in Jude. Amen. Verse number 20. Amen. Verse number 20. It's where we'll begin to read. Amen. Can't say enough tonight how good it is to be saved. I just can't get away from that. Amen. Just can't say enough. Amen. How good it is just to be saved. Amen. I know. I, I, I went back this, this morning, got done preaching. Amen. I got to thinking about it a little while, and I thought, man, where I was at, amen, when the Lord saved me, the condition my life was in, amen, I was worthy, amen, to die that way, and uh my home was in a mess, my life was in a mess, out of order, but the Lord saw fit to pass by my way, amen, and man, I won't, I won't ever want to get over that, what the Lord Jesus did for me, amen, I'm telling you, amen, I, I'm glad that he didn't leave me there when he saved me, that night, amen, that I left out of that church, I knew that I could no longer be the same, <laughs> no longer, amen, be the man that I used to be. Man, that's what salvation will do for you. I knew, I knew that Holy Ghost had moved in, amen, something. But I didn't even know what the Holy Ghost was, but I knew something was inside me that hadn't been there before. And man, it was good, and I didn't, want to, I didn't ever want to get over that. Man, I'm glad that he didn't leave me. Where, man, I'm glad he didn't leave my home where it was at, man. You know, we was on, we was on the brink of a divorce, amen. And ain't no doubt, Brother Brad, we was headed that way. And praise be to God, amen. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I didn't change that, amen. God did. Amen. I won't tell you tonight, I didn't change that, God did. Amen. I tried to change it in many days, amen, and I couldn't. But one night I met a man that could, amen. His name's Jesus. He moved in. You know what I did, Brother Perry? I took him back home with me that night. You say, preacher, you crazy. I'm telling you, I took him back home with me that night, Amen. amen. And boy, it couldn't be the same as it used to be, man. I'm telling you, it's different. Different now, amen. Yeah. Praise God, amen. I don't want to ever forget that, amen. You say, preacher, I didn't experience that. Well, you need to, amen. I guarantee you, it'll help you. Amen, it's better than anything you've ever had, amen. I promise you. I guarantee you, it'll help your soul tonight you get born again. Uh, they said this in Jude chapter 1, verse number 20. It's where we'll be at tonight. We'll read, and the Lord be our helper. We'll try to... Uh, preach out of verse number 22. If God will let us, we'll say some things out of the other verses as well. Uh, but man, it sure is just good to be saved. You ought to, you ought to ever, listen, if you've never been saved, you ought to be. Amen. 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 That old religion, amen, ain't helping you none. It's dead. Amen. It's dry. That might be the reason you can't sing. It might be the reason you can't shout. It might be the reason you can't enjoy the presence and power of God, amen. But I want to tell you what, you can junk that religion, come to Jesus, amen. Uh, meet the Redeemer, the Holy Ghost move in. And I want to tell you what, something inside of you every now and then to stand up and he'll be wanting to worship, amen. amen. He'll be wanting to get with God. And I want to tell you, he'll glorify the Son, amen. That's what he does. All right, verse number 20. He said, but ye, beloved, 
Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You ever tried that? Amen. Oh, he said, keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. We talked about eternal life this morning. He said, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And of some having compassion, making a difference. And others saved with fear, saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. What about that? Amen. Amen. The, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, we love you tonight. God, we thank you for first loving us. Lord, thank you, Lord, for salvation. God, it's just good to be saved tonight. Good to know you. Lord God, I'm glad that I can have a relationship with you. Lord, how sweet it is to know that one day we'll leave this world and we've got a home in heaven. There's no doubt, Lord, that when we leave this life, we've got the best is yet to come. Lord, I pray that you do that work in our midst tonight that only you can. Bind every unclean spirit. Lord, help us, Lord, that we'll not grieve or quench the Spirit of God, but that we'll allow you to work in our midst tonight. Show yourself mighty and strong above all of our fears, and Lord, above all of our favors tonight. Help us, Lord, to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to look at verse number 22 and preach on this thought of making a difference tonight. On making a difference and ask yourself the question, amen, maybe, am I making a difference? Now, he said here in our text, he said, and of some have compassion, making a difference. I thought about today, I want to be a difference maker, amen. I want to be one, Brother Perry, that makes a difference in folks' lives, amen. Uh, we have an opportunity, Brother Brad, in this life. No doubt, amen, God gives us an opportunity of the places that he puts us, amen. Uh, whether it be in our home or uh, with our children, amen, or out on the job or down at the house of God, he gives us an opportunity uh, to make a difference, amen. And Jude here said, uh, and of some having compassion, uh, make a difference. Can I tell you tonight, uh, by way of introduction, that Christ made a difference, amen. I guarantee you, if you're saved tonight, you'd be able to say, uh, that the Lord Jesus made a difference in your life. Uh, you know where you was at when he found you, amen. Uh, you know the condition that you was in. You was on your way to hell. Uh, but he, my friend, made a difference, amen. He was a difference maker in your life, amen. Uh, but also, amen, this church, amen, has an opportunity to make a difference, amen. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that God placed this church here for this community, amen, uh, to make a difference, amen. Uh, we need to make a difference. Is that right tonight? Uh, we need to be able to make a difference where we at. Amen. Uh, but the child of God, amen, uh, tonight, if you're saved, you ought to be able to make a difference. Amen. Uh, no matter where you at, uh, no matter who you go, where you go, uh, no matter who you're surrounded by, uh, you ought to be the difference maker. Amen. Uh, you ought not to adapt to your surroundings. Amen. Uh, but you ought to live in such a way uh, that your surroundings would adapt out to you. Amen. Is that right tonight? Amen. Uh, we need to be able to make a difference. Amen. In people's lives. I thought about uh, what he said. Look in Matthew chapter number 5 tonight uh, with me for a little while by way of introduction. We want to look in Matthew uh, chapter number 5 in a familiar text here. Uh, then we'll come back where we're at. Amen. In Matthew chapter number 5. Uh, you know I said there in verse number 14 is where we want to begin to read. Uh, in verse number 14 he said ye are the light of the world. Amen. Uh, can you imagine that, Brother Brad? Uh, you're the light of the world. He said, a city uh, that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, uh, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. He said, let your light. Amen. I uh, noticed that he said, you have a light. Amen. He said, let your light, Brother Brad, 
that. Amen. If you're a saved child of God tonight, uh, you have a light. Amen. Uh, God, you don't have a light of your own. Amen. It is the light of God. Amen. Uh, you know what he said? Let your light uh, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. I thought about, amen, uh, the power of that light, Brother Hope. It implies that this world is sitting in darkness. Amen. It implies that this world is a dark place. We'd all say amen to that. Uh, the longer we live, uh, the darker it gets. Amen. Uh, but you know what God has done? Uh, God has deposited his light in three places in this life. Amen. Uh, you'll find that he deposited light in the scripture. Amen. Uh, you know what he said? He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Uh, but the truth is, amen, uh, not everybody believes this Bible is the word of God. Amen. Uh, Brother Perry, they sum uh, uh, that this Bible is nothing but another book. Amen. Uh, they don't believe the King James Bible is indeed the words of the living God. Amen. Uh, so therefore, amen, uh, this book's not liable to help them a whole lot. Amen. Uh, you agree with that, don't you? Amen. Uh, but you know what I find? Uh, they also deposited his life in the Savior. Amen. He is the light. Amen. Uh, you know what? We just bear witness of that light. But you know what? Uh, he gave him the light. Uh, but the truth be known tonight, uh, not everybody in this world uh, believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Uh, not everybody believes uh, uh, that he is God in the flesh. Amen. Uh, but you know what? Uh, God also deposited his light in the life of the saint of God. Amen. He said, ye are uh, the light of the world. Amen. Uh, you know what? He said, let your light so shine uh, before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want you to look with me, if you would, for a moment. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, have you ever thought about it this way, amen? Uh, you may be the only thing, uh, uh, the only Bible that anybody ever reads, amen? He said, you are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men, amen? I wonder tonight, uh, that crowd that you get around, amen? Uh, what is the gospel according to your life, amen? I'm telling you friend God has gave you an opportunity to be a difference maker amen he has let his light amen he has deposited his light into your life and he said now go let your light shine uh, before me and amen uh, can I tell you there's some men looking on amen and you know what that old that, uh, there was times in my life when I was lost amen I didn't want nothing to do with God I knew people that professed to know him uh, that lived just like I did amen I had absolutely no desire to be be saved, amen. Uh, but you know what I find? Uh, uh, God let me live long enough to meet somebody uh, that had been born from above, amen. Uh, that didn't mind being a difference maker, amen. Uh, that didn't mind letting their light shine, amen. In such a way that I could see uh, Christ living in them and through them, amen. I'm telling you, God, amen, gave us light, amen. And he said what we ought to do is let that light shine, amen. You know what, it'd be good if it would start out, notice what he said here. In verse number 15 in Matthew 5, he said, uh, Neither do me a light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give a light unto all that are in the house. That'd be a good place to start, wouldn't it? Amen. Uh, privately, amen, in the four walls of your home, amen. That's the where your light shines the brightest, amen. That's where the light that you have is real, amen. Uh, but you notice what all he said? He said, also let that light shine publicly, amen. A city that sit on a hill that uh, cannot be hid. You ever thought about it this way? Also, we'd have let it shine with a purpose. You know what? When we come in here tonight and we flip those lights on, we didn't flip those lights on so we could sit here and stare at the light. Amen. What the light's purpose was to illuminate the room. Amen. How the light was to get it where we could see. Amen. In other words, amen. How when our light's shining, amen, it's not so that we can bring attention to ourselves as being the great Christian, the child of God. How but that light, amen, is to illuminate people, amen, how toward the Lord Jesus Christ so that they could see him living in us and through us for the glory of God. Amen. If we ain't careful, we'll think that we're the light. Amen. And want all the attention. But God said, amen, that lies to shine purposefully to glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. We see the power of that light. But what about the place of that light? Amen. He said a city that sit on a hill cannot be here. You know what that is? That's a collective light. 
You ever thought about us as a church, amen? God put us here in this community to be a light. Right. Amen. Brother Perry, he didn't set us here uh, just, to, just to be here. He put us here to be a light. Have you ever went up on a mountain at night and looked out and you could see the city down below? And you know what? You could see the light of the city and it wasn't just one little bit of light. It was a bunch of little lights that made up a great light, amen? And you know what? That's what God wants here at Faith Baptist Church. A bunch of little lights, amen, uh, that makes a big light, amen, so that we can be a city that's set on a hill uh, that cannot be hid. We find, amen, and uh, not only that, but it's a purpose to it uh, so that we can shine for the glory of God. Look over here in the book of Jude, amen? He said, and of some having compassion, making a difference, amen. If we want to be a difference maker, I'll give you three things, amen. It's going to have to start with you amen it's gonna have to start with me it's gonna have to start with us amen it's gonna have to begin with self amen how do you know what brother Perry I can't control your walk with God but I can control mine amen I'm telling you look what he said in verse number 20 he said but you beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost keep yourselves in the love of God amen have you ever thought about that or that inward work brother hold if we're gonna make a difference it's going to have to begin with us, uh, that inward work of a holy God, uh, working in us and out of us, amen, for his glory. Have you ever thought, amen, uh, that work, are we making a difference, amen? Uh, can I tell you for you ever make a difference in anybody else's life, it's first going to have to be a difference made in your life. Amen. You can't stay the same. Amen. You can't live the same, talk the same, act the same, amen, and do the same things they do and make a difference in their lives. Amen. It's sort of like, amen, trying to tell your children to do something uh, all the time, but you're not willing to do it. Uh, you ever seen this crowd, amen, uh, that wants to hold their children to the law, and their children's going to bless God do this, uh, but, they, uh, but all they ever do is rise up against authority. Right. Amen. You know what? That ain't going to work. Right. Look what he's got. He's, it's got to start within yourself, Amen. It's got to be an inward work of the Holy Ghost, amen. I'm working in your life, and you've got to be willing to let that building up your holy faith, amen. Have you ever thought about, uh, Brother Perry, what we'd be good at Faith Baptist Church tonight is just draw a circle around ourselves, uh, forget about what everybody else is doing, amen, and say, God, I want to make a difference, and I'm going to start right here with me. I've got some things that's got to change in my life. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. I'm not as close to God as I want to be. Hey, I'm not the only one in here like that, am I? Hey, I'm telling you, friend, I'm not satisfied where I'm at. God, I want to get closer to you. I want to enjoy sweet fellowship with you. I want to walk closer to you than I ever have before. God, would you help me? I want to be a difference maker. I want to make a difference in my children's life. Amen. You know where that's going to begin, Louis? It's going to begin with you, amen. I won't tell you, friend, you think about it, amen. I wonder, are we making a difference, amen? I want you to think about it this way in my church, amen. I want to be a difference maker at the church, God, amen. I want to be able to come down, amen, and make a difference, amen, in people's lives. I won't tell you, this ain't a game. This is people's lives we're talking about, and we ought to be willing to have compassion. That's a key word to it all, amen. Having compassion and making a difference difference, amen. Oh, have you ever thought about that work? It's going to have to begin with you, amen. What did he say? But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever thought about, listen, uh, too many people, amen, get in, uh, get saved by grace, uh, they grow for about three months, uh, then they stop growing, uh, they've got as close as they want to get, and then when God starts putting his hand on some things, they say, not that, Lord. And that's as far as we're willing to go. It'd be a good day, amen, if we'd continue to grow. It'd be a good day. Hey, well, ain't nothing. Look what he said in Philippians chapter number three. Philippians chapter number three, amen. Y'all remember in chapter number three and verse number 12, he said, not as though I had already attained uh, uh, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, uh, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark and the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I brother, hope what he said. Uh, we've got to forget that stuff back yonder, and we got to press forward for the glory of God. It's 
It's got to be an inward work, amen, of the Holy Ghost. It's going to have to begin with you, amen. What I'd do is I'd get me right. I'd get me as close to God. It's, I'm amazed how folks, amen, myself included, amen, I've been guilty. How we'll have things going on in our own life. And we know we ain't right with God. And we know we ain't where we supposed to be. And we know we got areas of our life that we need to build up. Hey, we do need some building up, don't we? Amen. Uh, but we'll sit around and try to figure out everybody else's problems. Amen. And we'll try to get everybody else right with God. And we'll fuss and gripe and grumble about what everybody else is doing and what they're not doing. Uh, but we're not one time checking ourselves up and saying, Lord, I want that work to begin in me. I want to get right right with God. I want to get close to you. I God start that work here uh, so that I can make a difference. Amen. Can I tell you we won't ever make a difference till it starts with us. So we clean, listen, you ever you heard that story. I know you've all heard it. Uh, clean up around your own steps before you clean up mine. That'd be a good place to start, wouldn't it? Sweep our own floors, amen, before we start sweeping everybody else's, you know. I'm talking about getting close to God. I'm talking about making a difference. You ain't going to make a difference with a junk pile, amen, uh, trying to clean everybody else up, amen. I'm telling you, friend, we need to learn to make a difference. We're going to have to begin with ourselves. But can I ask you a question? Do you want to make a difference to the saints of God? You know what we did? We come into this church today. You really don't know what's going on in the lives of people sitting on these pews. Ain't no, hey, it would blow us away if we really knew everything that was going on in these people's lives. Amen. Amen. Can I just let you in on a secret? Not everybody that comes in and sits down is rude. Sometimes they heartbroken and having dealt with a long, hard week, how the day's been tough, it's been hard. That ought not be the everyday experience of your life. How but you know what? Sometimes we be, we need to learn to be a difference maker in each other's life. Amen. He said in some having compassion, uh, making a difference. He talked about building up your most holy faith, uh, keeping yourselves in the love of God. You know what, brother? I'm amazed how we'll come in church sometime and you know what we'll see that a less desirable crowd amen and some want to see it how they ain't as spiritual as I am listen now and if we if we don't think they as spiritual as we are I will cut them off you know what we ought to be doing we ought to be trying to build them up amen. we ought to be able to try to help them we ought to be willing to make a difference. I'm amazed how we can go out there in the world and we can get down low and we can get into the scrums of this world and we can try to reach sinners and we want to see them saved. But then when we come to the house of God, after people get saved, they mess up one time and we write them off. God help us, amen. You know what we need to do? We need to make a difference in one another's life. When I see that you've been through, when I see you're not where you're supposed to be, what do you say? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. That's the whole key right there. He said, restore such a one, considering thyself. Amen. You know what? There are going to be days in your life when you ain't as spiritual as you need to be. Amen. Hey, we've all been there, haven't we? I've been there a time or two, I know. Amen. And I'm thinking, man, I ain't where I need to be. Amen. But you know what, Brother Brad? What helps, amen, It's when you're down low and you come to the house of God and somebody walk up to you, Brother Perry, and say, look, I, I know you've been having a hard time. I want you to know I'm praying for you. You ain't in this thing alone. I'm helping you fight hell. I'm in the battle with you, amen. I want you to know I love you. I want you to know, friend, we'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that old devil, and we'll give him all he can handle, amen, and we'll do it together. I'm telling you, the independent Baptists of our day has got way too good at putting their foot on one another and stomping each other down instead of trying to encourage and make a difference in one another's lives, amen. Hey, if they ain't as spiritual as you are, uh, so what? You didn't get where you at overnight either, amen. You didn't get there by yourself. It was because somebody made a difference in your life. I can go back through the years of my life since I got saved, and all you too, amen. You know you was as rough as they come when you got in. And you know what? You, you could think of people's names who helped you. I'm telling you, you could go back in your life, and you know of some individuals that has impacted your life. 
I mean, I can go back and I say, thank God for Perry Sims. I'm telling you, I got saved under his ministry. You know what, friend? He helped me, amen. He impacted my life. And I thank God for it. There come a time when God said, you got to move on. You know what? He sent us over to Jefferson and Brother Whitman helped my life. He helped my home, amen. I'm telling you, God used that man to help me, amen. And you know what? I've been helped through the man of God, amen. I've been helped through the ministry, amen. I've been helped, thank God. I'm telling you, friend, we ain't where we all we ain't here where we've always been, amen. And you know what I find? Went a little while after that, amen. You know what I find? I've been helped. Ever since I left Brother Whitman, I've been pastoring the church. And you know what? God has used some church members. Thanks be unto God. Not everybody's been devils. Hey, you can tell the devil I kick him in the face with that. Not everybody's been a devil. I've had some friends, amen, that sat on the church pew, that loved me, amen, and that has helped me along the way, amen. Oh, friend, not everybody's trying to tear you down. They are some, amen, that's still trying to build you up, amen. They still some, amen, that'll come and say, preacher, I know you're battling. I know it's been hard. There's a few Aaron and hers out there, amen, that'll hold up the hands of the man of God and say, hey, we're going to go on, ain't we, amen? You ain't in this thing by yourself. And you know what? It's been a blessing to me, amen? It's been a blessing to me. Not everybody, amen, has turned their back and went away. Hey, some, amen, that's been building up. I'm telling you what, we got some builder-uppers in here, amen. We got some, amen, that'll speak a kind word. Because some of you ought to practice speaking a kind word to each other every now and then. I'm telling you, it'll do you good, and it'll sure do the hearers some good. Amen. I'm telling you, you'd be surprised to battle some of these folks in here swiping. Last thing we need to do is come to the house of God and have to face some more of that garbage. I'm telling you, we come down here, we ought to get built up by one another, amen, because we know we've got Monday to look forward to. How we know the rest of the week is in a den of lions, amen, out here in this hell-bound world. And so we might as well take all we can get while we're in here and build each other up, amen. I'm talking about helping one another, amen. When's the last time? Let me ask you a question, friend. When's the last time you can say that I made a difference in this person's life? Amen. When's the last time something come to your mind and say, you know what? God used me to be a difference maker. Amen. All you all don't have to go back too far. You ought to be willing to make a difference. You see what's going on in people's lives. I mean, well, I'm telling you, we sat around and we watched people, amen, defeated, we watch them discouraged. We watch them, amen, and then, well, you know what? Eventually, they done had all they can take. Amen. After they have all they can take, they ain't got nowhere else to turn. They just get out. And then we'll sit around and have, have these super spiritual preachers, amen, and church members talking about, well, we saw that coming. The only problem is you saw it coming, but didn't do nothing to help the situation. Didn't do nothing to reach out and say, hey, you don't got to go that way. Hey, you got some help. Hey, you got some brothers and sisters in Christ hey, that love you. Hey, you don't got to turn out. You don't got to kick out. You don't got to give up. Hey, we can win over this thing, amen. But we'll have to do it together. Right. Amen. Yes. We'll have to do it together. I don't tell you, you might as well look around. You, want, you look around a little while, amen. They ain't a whole, you ain't got a whole lot more than this. Y'all agree with that, don't you? You know what? All my friends almost are in here. I don't have a lot outside here. I don't have, hey, listen now, I'm telling you, friend, I, most of my friends are in here. Amen. And I didn't come down here to fight, amen. I, come, I do all that garbage out yonder. I come down here to help you and say, hey, I praise God, we're going to win this battle, Amen. We're going to win this battle tonight. Are we making a difference tonight? I want to make a difference, amen, in the saints of God's life. I don't ever want to be guilty of being the last straw on a brother or sister's back to kick them out of here. Right. Amen. I don't ever want to be the one, amen, to be the last one to stomp on somebody. You know what, Brother Perry? When they get out, amen, you know what? We see them go. When's the last time we went at them? Right. Making a difference. Oh, preacher, you can't go out of it. They go and they go on, amen. Well, you ain't read your King James Bible all of it, amen. I'm telling you what, we ought to go at them. Let them know, friend, there's some help here. Amen. There's some help. We love you. It ain't, look, it's not just in word, but it has to be in deed, too. I'm talking about making a difference in one another's life. 
You don't ever know what, you're going, what somebody next to you is going through. You don't ever know the conversation they just had with somebody in their family, amen. You don't ever know, amen, how they've been attacked, amen. And just because they come in here, my friend, I look at you, they might come in here looking down and out because they're down and out. You ever thought of that? I'm talking about them being beat down, amen. This whole world's a wicked place. It ain't easy to live as a child of God in this world, amen. Uh, but you know what? This ought to be the easiest place in the world to live. We ought to be able to come in here, my friend, and I'm talking about we on one another's side. Yeah. I'm telling you what, we just one for all and all for one, amen. We in this thing together, and you know what, from time to time, we're going to have our problems, amen, and they're going to be time and time. Our personalities are going to clash, amen, uh, but there's a great big God in heaven, amen, uh, that's able to see us through it, amen. He's able to get us there. Hey, we can be able to sit and say, I'm on the winning side. Hey, thank God I'm glad to be on the winning side tonight. And you know what we better do? We better get back to making a difference in one another's life. Amen. You remember when, hey, most of you can sit around and you remember the day some of these people got saved. When they got saved, it was a glad day, wasn't it? Right. Amen. You know what? Just because they ain't done everything like you would do it, amen, don't mean they're a devil. Right. Amen. Hey, people that go around with this, they got, they, got a, they got the King James, all 66 books, but they added a few books to it. Yeah. Amen. 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 And this is the law of me. Amen. Uh, you know, that's right. Amen. Uh, we'll say, well, they don't cross their T and dot their I like I do. Hey, some definiteness in this word of God that we all should be doing and not should do. But you know what? Just because people don't live their life the same way you do, don't mean them they're a wicked devil. Oh, friend. We ought to just anchor down and preach right there for about two and a half hours. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, we living in a day where somebody do something one time. It don't take much. Amen. I mean, we can sin against God. Well, I'm telling you, every day of our life, how we have to battle with sin. How we'll go to God, God, forgive me. And we want God to forgive us. But you let somebody do us wrong one time, and we write them off, buddy, and there it ain't no more. Don't you ask me to forgive you. Don't you ask me to help you. Hey, my friend, they're a devil. Amen. God, help us. Make a difference. Amen. Look what he's saying in Romans chapter number 12. I want to make a difference. Amen to the saints of God, amen? I want to make a difference in your life, amen? I don't want to ever be guilty. God, help them preachers, amen, that's not wanting to help their flock, amen? Help that crowd, amen, that wants to drive them out, amen? I'm telling you what, that ain't no shepherd, amen, that's a stinking hireling, amen, How that's always in the pulpit trying to run people off, amen? How we ain't supposed to be trying to run one another off. What we're supposed to be doing is trying to help each other, amen, and trying to build you up, amen? amen. Well, you don't understand, preacher, amen. No, you don't quite understand, amen, if you think everybody's got to be ran off all the time. Amen. Look what he said in verse number nine. Let love be without dissimulation. You know what? Our actions toward one another would go a long way, amen, in helping each other. Amen. Look what he said. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned to one another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Amen. Oh, have you ever thought about that? Amen. And honor preferring one another. We live in a dog eat dog world. It's just spilled over into the church. I'm telling you, it's all about me. Amen. You know that's the truth. Baptist is the world's worst of being all about themselves. It's what I can get. It ain't there about what I can give. Right. Amen. Yeah. I, you, hey, there are a bunch of preachers like that. They'll circle around town, and all they're looking for is a meeting and a $100 bill. Amen. You know that's the truth. Amen. All they're doing is going from one place to another. They ain't been in their home church in 16 years. Amen. Hey, don't most of them even have a home church in their own state they live in? That's because they're always going from one place to the other. i just trying to find a dollar. Amen. But look what he said. Amen. He said, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. I mean, now listen. Rejoice with them that rejoice. When's the last time you found yourself all wrapped up, amen? Well, if you're a sister with a sister and you're a brother with a brother, not anything other than that, amen? I'm talking about just having yourself a hooting any, amen? All because of what God's done in somebody's life. Amen. When's the last time you come down here and somebody got full of the Holy Ghost and shouting it out over the goodness of God and you went shouting with them, amen? I'm talking about rejoicing with them that rejoice. Amen. amen. It blesses my heart, amen. It blesses my heart when somebody says, you know what? I ain't talked to them in two years, but bless God, I got a phone call last night. I said, praise God. Amen. amen. Hey, it gives us some hope, amen. I'm telling you, friends, you just don't know what we're missing out on. Amen. Weep with them that weep. We ain't careful, Amen. 
for somebody to get under a burden and get broken hearted and all we want to talk about is where they got what was coming to them. Right. Amen. What we ought to do is bear one another's burdens. Amen. amen. Be a burden bearer. If it burdens somebody else that's in this church, amen, it ought to be a burden to you. I'm talking about helping one our actions toward one another. Let brotherly love continue. Consider one another, amen. Provoke one another. But I want you to notice something else, Brother Brad. Not only that, but our, not only our actions to one another, but our attitudes toward one another. Look what he said in verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man. Evil for evil. Amen to God. Amen. Provide things on us in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, we ain't got that far yet. Live peaceably with all men. Now listen. No, no evil for evil. You know what? We're we good at doing. We're good at wanting to get back. Oh, yeah. Amen. Can I go and let you in on a secret? It's never right to do wrong. Right. Amen. Just because somebody else acted a certain way don't mean you got to act that way. Right. Amen. I get people, hey, I, you know what? You get pulled into things all the time as a pastor. I mean, just pull right up in the middle of things. You know what? I stand on the side of God. I don't care who's guilty and who's innocent, amen? If it's family and friends or whatever, we got to stay with God, amen? On God's side. And if you ain't careful, you get sucked up into that thing. And before you know it, uh, people's wanting you to choose sides and do this and do that. Ain't but one side to choose, and that's God's side. Right. Amen. amen. But look what he said there, Brother Brad. He said, recompense to no man evil for evil. And you know what? I find people getting a jaw in that jaw. That ain't just the kids, by the way. Right. Amen. Baptists is the world's work. Boy, they want to run everybody down. Yeah. Amen. They'll pull you up in it. You know what I learned a long time ago? That crowd's better off without responding to. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, sometimes no answer is the best answer. Yeah. You know what? It, them devils can't stand it when they run you down and you don't respond. Yeah. Amen. What they want is to pull you in. They trying to draw you in uh, so that they can say, there you go, amen. Here's the problem, amen. And then all of a sudden, you'll be the devil, amen, uh, because of your response to them, amen. Uh, so sometimes it's better off. you better off just saying, I ain't worried about it. I know who I am. I know what I've done. I know what I hadn't done. I ain't got time for those devils. I've got a God in heaven to serve uh, that loves me, uh, and I'm going to live for Jesus, and I'm going to try my best to be an example to them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try to be an example to them. You ain't ever going to get them right with God arguing with them all the time. That's right. Amen. You can forget it. Speaking Amen. All you're doing is feeding that devil. Amen. They want a little ammunition. And you know what? My mouth's big enough. If I ever get sucked in, I give them all kind of ammunition. Amen. I'm telling you, I give them a bunch of slugs. Amen. I just start throwing back my way. So I'm better off just keeping my mouth closed. Amen. And let my attitude. Amen. I be an attitude that be pleasing unto God and not get caught up in all that stuff. I got too much going on that I know that I need to deal with in my own life to be caught up with all that stuff. Amen. I'm telling you, some must be better off just letting them go. Amen. Say, I ain't got time to keep fooling with that. Amen. And then after a little while, they'll get the message. They'll get the message. Amen. Oh, I ain't going to get in on that. They ain't gonna, I'm not going to be able to suck them in as much as possible. If it be possible as much as life, then you live peaceably with all men. Man, that's hard to do, ain't it? That's hard. Listen, Brother Perry, you know what? You know what? That, can I let you in on something? That includes the brethren down here at the church. How about that? that includes each other as much as possible. We ought not get so offended every time somebody says something. They don't always mean what you think. Sometimes we got our own interpretations, amen. That ain't what they said at all, but we interpreted it that way and we got mad about it. We'd be better off just leaving the interpretation of what they is. I, you know what I've told my wife and kids? I said, we don't want to read into that, amen? We don't ever want to read into something unless we know. My wife taught me that, amen? She said, you know what? It ain't always what it seems to be. Right. Yeah. Amen. Before you know it, amen, you done got on something that ain't even what you thought it was, amen, and you done opened up your mouth, stuck your foot down, and about the time it hits the digestive system, you're trying to pull that thing back out there because you know, amen, you done crossed over where you weren't supposed to be. Amen. 
Amen. I'm telling you, friend, I've done it, amen. And I think, oh, <laughs> oh, no, God, help me. I'm talking about our attitudes to one another. Can I let you in on something? Ain't nothing like a good Baptist brethren handshake Amen, with a brother. smile on your face. Thank God, brother. Good to see you. I remember when you was over there in the trailer park, lost without God, and it saved Amen. your wretched soul and gave you a life worth living. And 20 some years later, it's still good Amen, to see brother. you. It's good to be at the house of God. Amen. Hey, we was glad when they got out of the trailer park, and now we ain't glad no more when they're sitting on the church pew. Oh, God, help our souls. Amen. You know what? It's still just as good to see them 20 years later as it was the day they came. Amen. 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 Man, I want to tell you that. Help us tonight. Amen. Understand. We're not, listen, this crowd in here is not our enemies. Right. This is our brethren. Amen. This is it, brother. As far as it goes, amen, we are members of the same body. Amen. amen. I ain't never beat on myself. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever beat up? Have you ever took a club to yourself? I hadn't. I don't have no intentions to. Amen. But that's what we do in our church family sometimes. Yes. Amen. I mean, I ain't never told my hand I don't need you. Right. <laughs> I, I'm telling you what, I need that fella today. I'm going to tell you. I want it. Brother, Brother Perry, you ain't never said you didn't need a kidney, have you, brother? I'm telling you. Amen. I'm telling you, friend. That's exactly right. I'm telling you, friend. You ain't never looked at another part of your body and said, I don't need you no more. But you know what I, I have seen in the church? Yeah. We act like we don't need each other. Right. Amen. That's right until we do need each other. Yeah. And then you know what? We done did so much to each other that we don't even want to talk. Right. I'm talking about our attitudes toward one another. What about our affections to one another? In verse number 18, look what he said. Uh, or in verse number 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Uh -oh. God help us. The Baptist Creed. He said, but rather give place in the wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Oh, Lord Jesus. Now, that, don't blame that on the preacher. That's, that's King James Bible. Amen. God said that. Amen. He said, if he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heat coals of fire on his head. Let me show you something. Be not, King James Bible, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Sounds to me like God wants us doing something, amen, other than trying to get vengeance all the time. Yeah. Sounds to me like he don't want us just because somebody else had a little evil way don't mean that he wants us to have an evil way back to him. Right. <laughs> just because somebody else had an evil tongue don't mean he wants us to have an evil tongue. He said, but overcome that evil with good. Bless them which curse you. Have you ever thought about that? That's hard to do. I'm telling you what, something about the man, that old man that's still living inside me, something about that old man says, you had a bunch of devils, amen. I'm going to take this up and deal with it. Right. But there's something about that new man that says, let it alone. Let it alone. Vengeance is mine. Amen. Whatsoever man so he be not deceived. Whatsoever man so is that, shall he also reap. Amen. But you know what? Our affection... Notice what he goes back in verse 18. He said, be peaceful. You know what? You ought to do as much as you can to keep peace in the family of God. Amen. We ought to do everything we can to keep peace with one another. You ever thought about that, Brother Perry? Every time you do something I don't like, I ain't got to get mad about it. Every time I do something you don't like, you don't got to get mad about it. Because I promise you, amen, if I'm spending three hours or so in front of you people every week, you're going to find something I say you don't like. Amen. I promise you, you stick around long enough, I will say something you don't like. And if you ain't careful, that's it. Amen. Come back to next service, amen, I might say something you like. Amen. Don't give up at her one time, amen. I'm telling you, be peaceful with one another, amen. That's amazing, amen, how we'll treat each other, though, if just because of one word. One time. I mean, they've been a blessing to you for 20 years. But it don't take but one time that you feel like they've crossed you and you cut them off. Amen. Matter of fact, you just cut them out, you will. I mean, it's over. <laughs> I'm telling you, friend. Amen. Be peaceful with one another. There ain't nothing wrong with apologizing. Y'all hear that? Ain't nothing wrong with apologizing. Sometimes it's just good to say I was wrong. 
I, have you ever been wrong? <laughs> I know some folks ain't never been wrong. Amen. But I have been wrong. <laughs> and I have had to say, I am sorry. <laughs> I did wrong. I didn't mean that. I shouldn't, have said, I shouldn't have said that. Amen. You ever said something you shouldn't have said? Amen. What you should find yourself doing is the person you said it to. Amen. Tell them, I'm sorry I said that. It sure would help a matter a little bit if you say, I'm sorry I said that. I shouldn't have said that to you. Amen. I learned a long time ago, sometimes I've tried to pay compliments to people and it didn't work that way. I quit trying to give compliments in certain things, amen, because it didn't come out that way. <laughs> I mean, worst thing I ever done is run across a young lady and say, when's your baby due, amen. I was trying to give her a compliment. Been a long time since I seen them, amen. She was a little bitty thing, amen. She went to our church, amen. They left our church and they hated me anyway, amen. I'm telling you, and it didn't help matters next time I see them, say, when's your baby due? My, I'm telling you what, I was just, that was foolish. Yeah. My wife grabbed me by the arm and said, come on. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you. But that was one of them times I should have kept my mouth shut. Amen, I'd have been better off nodding my head and walking on because they didn't like me anyways. Amen. Well, Brother Brad, that's one of them times. You talking about living peaceably with them? Amen. I could see fire in her eyes. And her mama, too. Her mama's like, I could tell, but she was hot. And I'm like, well, let's just move on. Amen. Move on. Can I tell you something else? He said, not only be peaceful, but look what else it said in verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place on the wrath. For it is written, vengeance of mine, saith, he said, vengeance of mine, I will pay, saith the Lord. Sounds like he wants us to be patient with each other. You ever try being patient with each other? Patience is a hard thing to get. <laughs> Patience is very difficult. You know what I find? I'm amazed. Listen now. You ever find yourself being more patient with people you don't even know? Than you are your own children? I mean, more patient with somebody else's children than you are your own children? God's convicted me about that time or two. Uh, I mean, you're so patient with them, they can do anything and get away with it. But your kids do something, you sc you'll scream and, cut and, and, and throw a fit, amen, and hey, you're going to deal with this now. We, say, we carry that same mentality down here at the house of God. Yeah. I mean, we be patient with people, but when we come down here, we got, we got this ideal of the way we think everybody should be. And once they step out of those bounds, we forget all about being patient. Amen. Be patient, amen. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need that one day, amen. We're, you know what? In other words, we ain't supposed to take matters in our own hands. Amen. Amen. Leave, it in, leave it up to God. What about trying to be positive instead of negative? Yeah. You know what he said? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Have you ever tried to be just positive? You ain't got to be negative about everything. I mean, you can be getting into glory, amen, and tell some folks, and they're going to find a negative something to say. Amen. They're going to throw a little bit of water on that fire. Amen. They're going to try to do all. Here comes the wet blankets. Amen. Hey, you ain't careful. Amen. I think about these kids up here singing out for the glory of God. As loud as I ever heard them sing. Amen. Right. Hey, you ain't careful. You'll have some old self, something in here talking about, well, I seen one of them. Yeah. I mean, I seen one of them. Boy, they wasn't singing. But they other 20 was. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I'm telling you what, loud and clear, I could hear them. I'm talking about be careful. I say amen to that. I encourage it. Amen. I promote it. Go right on ahead. Sing for the glory of God. Amen. Uh, but you think about it. What about trying to be pleasant? Don't be the kind of person that's always looking for something to be upset about. You ever been around people that they always looking for something to be upset about? Man, I got it. If I ain't mad, I ain't living. I mean, just imagine you had to go home with that individual, man. I mean, you had to deal with them an hour down here at church. Imagine if you had to go home with them. I'm serious. I mean, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, that'd be hard to do, amen. Sometimes I'd have to find something to be positive about. I'd help you out a little bit. Be some, well, I'd find something positive. Amen. If you couldn't find it, I'd try to help you, amen. That'd be, but you think about it. We find, amen, in the life of saints, have we tried to make a difference? You never know what's going on in their, people's lives in here. Some of you, amen, listen, when's the last time you picked up a phone? Some of you picked up a phone, but it ain't been for the right reason. Now listen, listen, when's the last time you used that device to call a brother, if you're a brother, a sister, if you're a sister? Let's don't cross no lines, amen? Listen, 
But when's the last time you saw somebody that you know that had a little bit on them? And you just picked up the phone and said, hey, brother, I'm praying for you. Yeah. Sister, you know what? I know it's tough. Just hang in there. God's going to come through. You know what? It'd be a help. It'd be a help. It'd be a help to each other. You never know. We was talking about a couple Sundays ago. What if this service was your last service? That applies to the children of God, too. You know what? They sometimes, amen, they might, somebody, I've seen a lot of people come in church, amen, to never come again. And it could have been, it could have changed if we'd have just made a difference. What about, have you made a difference in a sinner's life lately? When's the last time, oh Lord, help us, Jesus, that we brought a sinner to church? I mean, have you ever thought about when you got saved, you wanted to tell everybody about Jesus? They didn't many days and many weeks go by without you bringing somebody with you. You're going to find somebody. People say, well, people don't come to church like they used to. It might be because people don't go out of sinners like they used to. Amen. I be, listen, have you ever thought about the condition that they're in? They are lost. Sinners are going to do what sinners do. Brother Perry, we're the ones that's got to go at her. I'm talking about have you really made a difference in a sinner's life lately? Just talking to them, witnessing to them, letting them know that there's a God in heaven that loves them. Amen. We get so full of pride sometimes thinking about ourselves and the way we have it that we forget all about where we used to be and how sinners really have it today. There's some children sitting at home tonight. Would to God that they had a saved daddy right. or a saved mama. Brother Perry, we could be the ones to make a difference in their lives. We could be the ones, amen, to take them the gospel and see that soul saved, amen. And that daddy start bringing that family to church and that mama gets saved and them amen. children get saved. And, I mean, do you remember being there? I remember being the one on the other side of the door. I remember being the one, amen, that would lock the door and turn off the TV and run to the back room, amen. I remember being the one that didn't want nothing to do with God. But they was somebody that made a difference in my life. Amen. They was one man. I, I, I go on and tell you, he, he, was a, uh, he was a first free will Baptist preacher. They don't even believe in eternal security. But you know what? Me and my wife lived in three different places in Sylacauga. And one out in Coosa County. Way out of town. And everywhere we lived, that man knocked on our door. He didn't know us. He didn't even know who we was. Uh, you know what? Every time he knocked on the door, we was hiding in the back room. But this man, you know what? He made a difference in my life. I knew, amen, when he was coming, I knew he wasn't there to drink coffee and, and have a donut. He was there to talk about Jesus, amen. And so therefore, we'd cut out the light. You know what he did, Brother Perry? He made a difference in my life. Amen. I didn't get saved, but he didn't ever have an opportunity to sit down and give me the gospel. But I knew what that man was there for. And you know what I remember? Two little boys that I still today think was lost in Faith Baptist Church in Sylacauga, Alabama, that my friend kept giving me the gospel when I was dying in my sin and going to hell, that kept on after God dealt with me on that night, Brother Perry, you know, kept on calling me up, giving me the gospel. You know what they did? They made a difference. You can make a difference tonight if you want to. You can stand with us. We'll get Brother Abner if you'd play. You might need to pray. You think about it. Are you making a difference tonight? Are we making a difference? I want to make a difference. I want to be a help to some soul. I want to be a help in the people of God's life. You know what we ought to believe? If we ain't got nobody, we got each other. That's right. And we, if there ain't nobody else in this world we can count on, we ought to be able to count on each other. We ought to be there for one another. We ought to. We ought to give each other. Sometimes it's all right to give each other the benefit of the doubt. You ever try to do that? Just give somebody the benefit of the doubt. Not knowing what they're really going through. What's causing them. I've seen some people that say I'm saved. But you know what? They have made a negative impact in people's lives by not doing the right thing. Can I go on and tell you? They will answer to God for that. You can't use that as a crutch to not be right with God. Amen. You can't go around saying, well, it's because of them that I got away. 
It's because of them that I got out. It's because of them, amen, that I'm doing my thing. You're going to get an account for yourself. Are you making a difference tonight? Lord, help me make a difference. Can I go on and tell you? Brother Perry, some of us have been saved a long time. We got an opportunity tonight. We need to realize our opportunities that we can make a difference in these children's lives. These children that come down here to this church, we can make a difference in their lives. 